God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. going to be looking at persevering faith and prayer for, for transformation. Persevering faith and prayer for transformation. There is need for perseverance in our faith and in our prayers if we are going to experience any form of transformation. Oftentimes, transformation does not come so, I mean, uh, at once. Sometimes it comes on the wings of persevering faith and prayer. Sometimes uh, uh, transformation is not a matter of name it and claim it. Sometimes God answers prayers very speedily. But sometimes you have to persevere. You have to persevere by faith in the place of prayer in order to get what you are looking up to God for. And in this case, the matter of transformation. Whether it is transformation in our homes, in our lives, in our families, in our communities, and in our nations. Oftentimes, transformation comes on the wings of persevering faith and prayers. We are going to read the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 35 to 39. And then we'll go on to chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. The matter of transformation is a treasure that oftentimes God does not release it anyhow. Wherever the transformation is to come for, wherever you are looking for transformation, in whichever dimension, it often does not come just on a platter of gold. It's a treasure. It's a divine treasure. And before it is released, there is need for prayer, a prayer of faith, a persevering prayer before it will be released. And this scripture is saying to us, in every case, don't cast away your confidence. Don't cast away your faith, your, your faith, your ability to believe 
that what you are looking for, you will get it. Even though it tarries, wait for it. It will not tarry. The Bible says it will surely come. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, he said it will surely come. Surely it will come. It will not tarry. So if it tarries, wait for it. Don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Transformation comes with great reward. There is a change of life, there is a move of the spirit, and there is rest. There is joy wherever God grants transformation. So while we are praying for transformation, don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance. NIV says you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. The promise of transformation is everywhere in the scriptures. Wherever a group of people are experiencing difficulty and they begin to cry to God for transformation, God normally grants transformation in answer to his, to his promise that we are praying for. It's, it has a great reward. You remember when the children of Israel were crying in Egypt. As long as they remained quiet in their troubles, their troubles remained with them. No matter how much they struggled, you know the Bible says, the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiplied. And none of them was feeble, so they didn't cry. They knew how to manage oppression. They didn't cry. And for those centuries that they were oppressed, they did not cry. But when the matter became so serious and it became very unbearable, oftentimes that's when we normally cry out for transformation. They began to cry. They began to pray. And God went ahead to look for his vessel in Moses. And he went and encountered Moses in the wilderness of Midian. In that burning bush. And God said, the cry of the children of Israel has come up to me. Therefore, come and I will send you to deliver them. It has a great reward. You remember that when Moses was sent, there was an exodus. Transformation came. Their deliverance arrived. It was a glorious exit from Egypt. It was not a little thing at all. God taught Pharaoh and Egypt a lesson. Just because the people of God cried out for transformation and they persevered in it until God went and arrested Moses who came to deliver them. So, don't cast away your confidence. It has a great, a great reward. You have need of perseverance so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what God has promised. And he says, for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Sometimes, as we pray for transformation, it delays in coming, so to say. But normally God doesn't delay because there is divine timing for everything. So he says, wait for it. It will not tarry. And now, while you are waiting, the just shall live. By what? By faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith. While you are waiting, keep praying a prayer of faith, trusting in God who has made a promise. It demands perseverance. It demands faith. Waiting for transformation in any nation 
demands perseverance, it demands faith. Even in a family, you are looking for transformation. It's been a tough time in your family relationship. Sometimes you pray and it looks as if the more you pray, the worse it becomes. But when God makes a promise over that matter, catch it by faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the, is the substance. It's, it's actually the substance of what you are looking for. When you don't have faith in what God has promised, you have nothing, no anchor for your, for your prayers. No anchor, nothing to assure you that your prayers will be answered. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the seal of all. It is the seal of all of what you are looking for. It is the evidence of what you are looking for. Even though it is not yet visible. But because you have faith in God and in what he has promised, you will have it. You already have the evidence. And you know, faith is not arbitrary. The Bible says, faith comes by what? By hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. You don't just say, I believe God. I believe God. What has he said to you that you are believing? Faith is not arbitrary. If we are going to have transformation, there must be a word of promise that, that we are holding on to as an anchor for our faith. When there is no anchor, even when you are saying, yes, I believe God will do it, storms will come. And then that song says, will your anchor hold that time? When you have no anchor, your faith will shake and then you will lose, you will lose hope. But faith itself, grasping the word that God has spoken in your hearing, grasping the promise that God has made has an anchor. That faith already is anchored on the living word of God and it, you already have the, the substance for what you are looking for. And once that happens, hold on to God. Even though that transformation you are looking for tarries, hold that word. It will surely come. It will not tarry. It will surely come to pass. That was how the people of old got transformation. That was how the elders of faith trusted in God and trusted in what he said to them. And they were able to get the transformation they were looking for. They persevered holding on to that word. They prayed with it. They prayed about it. They prayed with that promise, that word, that sure word of promise. They persevered and they got it. And what is perseverance? Perseverance simply means persistence. Persistence. When you persevere in prayer, it means you are persistent in prayer over a matter despite difficulties and failure or despite opposition that may arise before you get what you are looking for. You persevere. You persist in prayer. You are steadfast, unshakable in prayers. That's perseverance. Because as we look for transformation and it tarries while God is watching how your faith is, it looks as if it tarries and the difficulty continues. Meanwhile, you are holding on to the word of God but the difficulty continues. The failure seems to continue. The opposition seems to continue. But you, you hold on to what God has said. You persevere in the place of prayer until you get what God has promised. Transformation needs perseverance. 
especially in our faith and in our prayers if we are going to get what God has promised over our nations a lot of difficulties that we are experiencing sometimes makes our hearts to fail sometimes you 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 are tempted to ask God questions and to query God and say God you promised but why are we seeing all these difficulties I, I, we don't believe in this you have dropped your confidence you will not get what God has promised we have need of perseverance because God will never fail when he makes a promise he never fails he watches over his word to perform it wait for it it will surely come it will not tarry despite the temporary difficulties wait persevere persist in prayers you will get it there will be transformation at home even those children you are crying for you will get transformation over their lives in the name of Jesus Christ those husbands you have been praying and waiting on God and say Lord when will you bring this man to Christ why is he tarrying so long I prayed and prayed and prayed and yet this thing is not happening no it will happen don't drop your confidence persevere it will not tarry wait for it it will come to pass may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus illustrated this need in the book of Luke chapter 18 this need for persevering faith in prayers Luke chapter 18 it's a popular scripture but it's very crucial for us to look at it this night as we press on to begin to pray and labor for transformation Luke 18 verses 1 to 8 Luke 18 1 to 8 then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart, not to faint. Saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet, because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? Though he bears long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? You will discover that there are these two things that the Lord is, is mentioning in that scripture, hammering it. He's mentioning the matter of, of faith. He's mentioning the matter of perseverance. Persevering faith. Jesus said, men ought always to do what? To pray and not to faint. The issue of laboring for transformation requires continual praying until we get what we are looking for as long as we have not got it even though we are suffering always pray men ought always to pray and not to faint oftentimes when difficulties come and we we want to pray and trust god for what is happening and we begin to pray and pray and pray once what we are praying for does not come quickly we drop our faith and we look for alternatives the bible says a, a, a doubting man 
is like a wave of the sea. Let that person never think, never imagine that he will get anything from the Lord. We have need of faith. We have need of perseverance. That after we have done the will of God, we will obtain what God has promised. How many of us are trusting God for transformation in this hall tonight? How many of you? In whatever capacity, whether at home, in the nation, or anywhere. Yes, the Bible says you have need to persevere. That after you have done the will of God, you will receive what God has promised you. There is need for us to always pray, persevere in prayer, persevere in faith in order to receive what God has promised. And the story that Jesus told was of a widow. He said, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was also a widow in that city. And she came to me to him saying get justice for me from my adversary avenge me of my adversary avenge me of my adversary imagine a situation and it happens even today even literally this story happens that <clears throat> a widow went to the judge because someone has cheated her and because she had no husband, nobody to run around for her, nobody to fight her cause, she went to this judge. And the Bible describes that judge as an unjust judge. And she went to this judge, please avenge me of my adversary. Somebody has cheated me. But this judge will not bulge. What do you think that judge was looking for? bribe because the bible says he was a wicked judge he was looking for for bribe but what can a widow give where would she get anything to even give if she wanted to give she had no other alternative and she would not even go give any alternative than to to continually go to this unjust judge no alternative for her. And the matter of transformation is not something that we look for alternatives for. We said yesterday that transformation comes only from the Lord. It is only the Lord that brings transformation. Even when he will use a man, a woman to get transformation for someone else, he is the one who works in that person. Transformation comes only from above, not from around. This woman went to this judge, but the judge will not change. The woman persevered. She continued to go. The Bible said she went and went and went until this judge was broken by her perseverance. And the judge said to himself, even though I don't fear God and I don't regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me, lest by her perseverance she weary me. Even an unjust judge will honor perseverance. How much more? our just judge how much more God who watches over his word to perform it and it's possible even tonight that you may be a widow here who, who has been cheated and you have cried and cried maybe you were cheated by a family member maybe you were cheated by a community leader or someone somewhere and because you have no husband you think you have nobody to avenge you. Go to the just judge, the Lord Almighty. He is not unjust. Persevere in the place of prayer. There are many of our widows in this meeting who have got justice from above. 
when God arises for you, you will get transformation, even as a widow. Whatever is happening with your life and your family, God will avenge you. This widow went and went until the judge broke down and got her justice. And the Lord said, hear what that unjust judge said. That he even honored perseverance. Shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, this matter demands faith. This matter demands persevering faith. God will send us help. He will grant us transformation. But it demands perseverance. You also remember a woman, that one was even an unbeliever. Who kept came, you know, coming to Jesus in Matthew 15. You remember that woman, the Gentile Syrophoenician woman who came to Jesus because her daughter was suffering from an infirmity. Demons were troubling her daughter. In Matthew 15, verses 20, 21 to 28. And she came, she came to Jesus. She had one cry. She needed something actually that was a transformation she was looking for because demons were troubling this girl day and night the girl would not sleep she needed divine intervention and she knew that jesus had what it takes to help her daughter so we are told the woman came saying have mercy on me, O oh Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. Uh, but he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Hey, then Jesus answered and said to her, Oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. What a perseverance. What a perseverance. Jesus had what it takes to heal that girl. But because there was a focus that Jesus came to the earth to fulfill. He was sent in this first instance to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he told the woman, ah, but a persevering woman will not bulge and God will not but honor persevering faith she spoke to Jesus passionately worshipped him, begged him and said okay even if you are not sent to people like us and you have even called me a dog it doesn't matter even dogs eat crumbs just give me crumbs I'm not asking for the full meal Oh, and the Lord responded to that great faith and healed her daughter. God honors persevering faith. Even when it is not right or it is not time, let me say like that, when it is not time for him to do something, persevering faith moves the hand of God. We are looking for transformation in different dimensions. Don't drop your confidence. Don't throw away your faith. Just because the matter tarries. God honors faith. Faith that holds on to God until he does something. Despite the difficulty that Jesus posed to this woman, she held on to the Lord and said, ah, I'm not going to take a no for an answer. 
as we pray for transformation in our nations with all the terrible difficulties sometimes our hearts are fainting you wonder whether God answers prayers I tell you the truth God answers prayers hold on to your faith don't cast away your confidence it will it will bring a great reward hold on to the Lord persevere in prayer and you will get what God has promised that was the kind of thing that also happened when the mother of Jesus begged Jesus to do something in, in a wedding ceremony do you remember John chapter 2 can we read even that just for us to take note of the fact tonight that the Lord will do what he promises but we have need of perseverance that after we have done the will of God we will obtain what he has promised John chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 10 on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding and when they ran out of wine the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine Jesus said to her woman what does your concern have to do with me my hour has not yet come his mother said to the servants whatever he says to you do it now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of the purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from but the servant who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests are well drunk then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him look at this kind of situation a marriage was about to collapse everything started very well it didn't look as if anything would collapse things were going on beautifully but suddenly the wine of that marriage finished and the whole thing was about to collapse thank God they invited Jesus they invited his mother they invited the disciples thank God Jesus was there and the mother of Jesus did something that God is calling on us to do if we are going to experience transformation by her hands transformation came to that marriage he noticed that their wine had finished joy has finished enjoyment has finished the relationship was going to now begin to get sour things were about to collapse and she began this prayer you know it was a prayer she prayed isn't it the mother of Jesus went to Jesus and said they have no wine. That was a prayer. Lord, these people have no wine. Look at this marriage. Don't allow it to collapse. They have no wine. Wine has finished. There is no joy in this relationship any longer. Lord, provide. I would have thought that the mother of Jesus should have you know maybe giving them money to go to the shops and buy wine 
Is that not an alternative? That should have been an alternative. But she knew that instead of taking imperfect alternatives, she knew where transformation comes from. And she had Jesus with her. She went to the Lord. They have no wine. And you know Jesus said something that again made me to, to be encouraged. That even when the time has not come for something to happen, when you persevere, it will happen. But when you drop your perseverance and faith, you start all over again. All your former perseverance shall be forgotten. You will start again, start afresh. And God will start counting the time afresh. This woman, as she prayed, Lord, they have no wine. Jesus said, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And that was the kind of thing she also responded to the other woman, the Syrophoenician woman. It was a roadblock. You can't go in in this matter. My hour has not come. I am not sent to the outsiders, but to the lost sheep of Israel. You remember that woman, because she, she refused to bulge, God honored her prayers. Even when Jesus was saying, you are not qualified for what you are asking for. Sometimes, when we pray for issues that need transformation, even our heart tells us, you are not qualified. You are not qualified. You are not the kind of people that we should answer her prayers. Something may be telling you inside. Yet, as you persevere by faith, trusting God, holding to him, despite all those difficulties and oppositions, he will answer you speedily. Jesus told his mother, my hour has not come. The time to do this kind of miracle has not come. Uh -huh. The mother, you know, the mother did something. She didn't even answer Jesus as that Syrophoenician woman answered Jesus. She simply commanded the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. What is that? Faith. She knew that Jesus had what it takes to change that situation and bring transformation. She believed that their, their situation would turn around only if they would do whatever Jesus tells them to do. And as she commanded those servants and said, don't worry, just go and stand by him. And I imagine what happened. Those servants, as they heard what Jesus said, they also heard what the mother said. So they went and stood by him. Jesus said, my hour has not come. They waited. They were just standing. Mama said, whatever you tell us, we will do. My hour has not come. Ah, if we are not going and you are not leaving, you won't leave here because you must do something. They stood there because they were waiting for what he would say to them that will bring transformation. And did Jesus say something to them? He gave instructions that brought the transformation they were looking for. He told them what to do, and as they did it, they got it. Perseverance by faith, believing in what he says, will bring us what we are looking for. And do you see that the instruction he gave them was not a difficult instruction. Fetch water, put in the pot, now begin to draw it out. Sometimes the solution to our problems, the, what will bring transformation, is a very simple instruction from the mouth of the master. But oftentimes, 
we don't wait to receive instruction. And yet, it is what he says to us that will bring faith in us. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we begin to labor in prayer for transformation at whatever level, don't forget this other aspect. God also wants to speak to you. He wants to instruct you. Thank God we have started looking at the matter of effective kingdom praying. Prayer is not a one-way matter. Prayer is a double-way issue. It's a communion with God. You speak to God, God speaks to you. Listen to what he says to you. It will bring transformation. Whatever he says to you, do it. As you labor in prayer, make sure you secure an anchor for your faith. Secure an anchor. Listen to what Jesus will have to say to you. And whatever he says to you, what should you do, please? Do it. It's possible that even here, your marriage is about to collapse. As we are praying for national transformation, you are busy praying for your own family. That's where your problem is, actually. And it's okay that you are praying about it. Now, it is important to know where transformation comes from. Sometimes because of the difficulties at home, the difficulties that your husband poses, you tend to toughen up and say, if you do this to me, I will do that to you. That will not give you transformation. The problem will be prolonged. Go to the Lord. Cry to him. Pray. Trust in him. And listen to him. He will give you simple instructions that will bring transformation. Very simple instructions. Even concerning children that are wayward. Oftentimes, we pray, pray, pray. We pray our stomach out. But we don't listen for what instructions God will give us about that child. It may be a simple instruction that if you listen to it and you persevere with it, that child will break down and come to the kingdom. But because you will not listen, transformation eludes you. Perseverance in faith and prayer brings transformation. So, as Jesus spoke to those servants, whatever he told them, they did it. And eventually, they got six big pots of wine. How much would they have spent to get that quantity of wine? Your marriage that is looking as if it's about to collapse... There is wine in heaven. God can restore the wine of your marriage. God can restore that joy that has been lost. God can restore it if only you will rise up in prayers and persevere in your faith. God can speak a word into that situation. What he says may look impossible and it may look even unreasonable. It may look unreasonable to the flesh. Look at what he said to them. There are these stone pots. Fetch water. Uh -uh. Oh God, it's not water we are looking for. It's wine. But they obeyed. They fetched the water. He didn't even do as if anything has happened or, or pray any prayer. He just said, all right, now begin to draw it out and go and give it to the master of ceremony. And on the way, as they went by faith. Do you know those servants have great faith? They didn't even question him. What he told them, they simply did it. It looked unreasonable, but they did it. They carried the water by faith, believing in what he said, and they, they went and gave the master of ceremony, and look at the comment. The best wine. God will give you the best as you exercise persevering faith in the name of Jesus. It's important for us to believe God. Even if what he says to you looks unreasonable. There was a, a woman, 
a sister who had an unyielding husband is so many years now unbendable husband and a womanizer but the wife was a very serious Christian very loving sister and this man kept bringing women home and the more she prayed for the husband crying, fasting, praying the more this man got harder in fact he would bring women home and tell the wife to vacate the bedroom and take the woman inside and sleep with her and this woman kept praying and crying one day the man announced I'm bringing another woman home that I will really marry and this woman broke down and she cried what will I do now oh God this is too much the more I prayed the worse it becomes what should I do and she came and she was giving counsel from the book of Romans chapter 12 what does the Bible say if your enemy hungers feed him if your enemy is thirsty do what give him drink by so doing you will be heaping heaps of coals of fire on his head don't don't avenge yourself vengeance is mine says the Lord that's where this issue of my enemies fall and die is ungodly it's not godly where did you learn it did Jesus practice that are you really like Jesus I don't know who you resemble persevering faith is what God is demanding for and this woman as she was counseled and said look even though this man has remained tough don't pray for his downfall don't pray for his death feed him take care of him love him the day he has announced that this new woman will come welcome her what I can't do it no way this woman want to collect my husband do it that's a word from the Lord she was prayed for and she prayed and she received courage and she went back home and true to it the man brought the woman at the set time and date and they came you know they came together and this uh, you know them now <laughs> husband catchers and she came with the man the man brought her zoom and they came home ever before that that time arrived the woman had cleaned everywhere made the bed neat because she knows that the man will bring the girl into the house into the bedroom made everywhere neat and cooked the best meal that the man likes for that day for that occasion she did it and she sat waiting and as soon as they appeared oh she came out welcome oh my daughter are you the one my husband has been talking about welcome god bless you you are welcome she did it and then she set the table i'm telling you a story for you to know that your ways are not my ways says the lord she did it she set the table and they sat to eat hmm. that was where the miracle happened as they sat and they were eating pounded yam with a bush meat correct soup the one that the man loved best and they were eating you know as the girl carried the first and the second ball of pounded yam he, she looked at this man and said I didn't know you are such a wicked man 
you told me that you have a wife that doesn't understand I didn't know you have such a loving woman you want me to break the heart of this woman if I do it now this is the same way you will treat me I'm not marrying you again and she carried her bag and left that was the end of that arrangement God does not fight as human beings fight the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. whatever he says to you do it that's what will bring transformation hold on to it that's the anchor to your faith even though it tarries wait for it it will not tarry it will surely come God is faithful he will bring transformation wherever we are looking for it in the name of Jesus Christ whatever Jesus says to you over your situation as you go away from here this is the secret even over this matter of national transformation we are looking for whatever he says to you do it you do what he says to you I do what he says to me we will conquer we will conquer faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and as you hold on to God by faith and you keep praying over those issues even though transformation tarries it will not tarry it will not tarry you will get what God has promised as Mary Magdalene was looking for, for the master the Lord Jesus Christ you remember how it happened that Jesus who came to save the world and when he was ascending they said they thought he would redeem Israel at this time and restore the kingdom to Israel they didn't know he came not only to re restore Israel he came to restore mankind they didn't know but now he died and he has resurrected they did not know you remember how Mary persevered at the tomb do you remember that's the kind of thing that brings transformation do you know that the resurrection message that we got from that story is a story that transforms lives today if Jesus did not rise from the dead the Bible says our faith is in vain because all the other religious leaders died and their bones are still in the tomb of what difference will we be our, our faith will be in vain but for the perseverance of Mary Magdalene the story is different today she insisted on seeing Jesus at the tomb she wanted Jesus by all means she persisted she wept and you know the prayer for transformation may involve weeping and even as you are weeping you weep for long and you see nothing but ordinary napkin you say Lord it's not napkin we are looking for continue persevere hold on to God keep praying it will not tarry she saw napkin she came out again oh Lord where did they take my master where did they put my master oh you can imagine the distress of heart weeping and bending to look inside whether she will see the master maybe he was hiding in one corner she didn't see anything but napkin and as she kept weeping and persevering praying insisting to see Jesus suddenly she saw angels ah you would have thought that's one answer at least I have seen angels let me go home there is a story to tell but don't go home with the story of angels even here tonight insist on seeing Jesus over the situation you came here with God is going to appear to you in the name of Jesus Christ she told those angels I'm not here for angels it's not angels ah, 
But you know, even the revelation of angels, Brother Peter and John did not see that one. They have gone home with a different story. Ah, she has done better. She should have gone home. But no, it was Jesus she was looking for. Again, as we labor for transformation, we must know who we are looking for. We must focus on the focus until we get transformation. There is no alternative that must satisfy us. That's how to get it. Because sometimes you may get some other things that look like it just to palliate your hunger. You must insist, Lord, until I see Jesus in the affairs that I'm talking about, I'm not going to leave you alone. I must see Jesus. It's not angels. And as she insisted, Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared. We had the story in the afternoon. Jesus appeared and said, Mary. Ah, she thought it was, eh, Jesus first asked, what are you looking for? Whom are you seeking? Don't talk to me, you gardener. I'm looking for Jesus. Sometimes God waits to see whether we know what we are looking for. Before he will grant it. Because transformation is costly. It's a treasure. It is God interve intervening in the affairs of men. It's a treasure. God doesn't release it anyhow. God will first check whether you know what you are looking for. What are you seeking? What are you looking for? Don't trouble me. Don't trouble me. If you have taken my Lord away, tell me where you have put him. I will go and carry him. Ah. Then Jesus, who shouldn't have appeared to anybody at that time, who should have gone first to the throne of grace, to the place of the altar, to offer the blood on behalf of mankind, Jesus, who should have first of all appeared before the Father, had to come down because somebody persevered to see him. Look, persevering faith makes God to do what he doesn't even want to do when the time has not come. Jesus appeared and said, Ah, I cannot go without answering this woman. Her prayer pulled Jesus back from going to heaven. He was on the way. He was on the way. And Jesus came back. And when he called Mary, Mary, and she recognized his voice. I said, Rabboni, wanted to grab him. He said, no, no, no. Don't touch me yet. Because by touching him, he will contaminate the sacrifice. Don't touch me yet. It's your persevering prayer that brought me back. I cannot but appear to you. Don't touch me yet because I have not yet ascended to my father and your father. But now go and tell the brothers to go ahead of me to Galilee. I will meet them there. Wow. Persevering faith that brought Jesus down to appear to a woman who knew how to persevere and persist even when things look impossible. This night, as we cry to God over our situations that need transformation, whether at home or at work, whether somebody is denying you justice and you are looking for transformation, you are looking for divine intervention, you are going to make up your mind tonight and pray and say, Lord, I will not give up. I will not cast away my confidence. I'm not going to drop my faith and having to repeat and repeat and start again and again. Lord, help me to be consistent. Help me to be persistent. And those issues tonight, we're going to call on God. We're going to begin that prayer tonight and say, Lord, answer our cry. Answer our cry. You are the Lord who answers prayers. Answer our prayer. We will begin to call on the Lord. We will insist. We will keep praying until we get the result. Until you get that transformation result. You don't give up. And if the Lord speaks a word to you, 
hold it. That's your C of O. What did I call it? That's your C of O. Those of you who know C of O. That's your certificate. That's your title deed to that thing you are looking for. That's the anchor for your prayers. You can keep reminding God about it. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't faint. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Don't lose confidence. Even when difficulty seems to continue, it will not tarry. Wait for what God has promised. You will receive it. Who is going to pray tonight and call on the Lord over that situation? It's possible that at home, that's where the battle is raging. Will you please pray? Will, will you please run away from alternatives? Turn to the Lord. Transformation comes not from the east or the west, but from the Lord. It is the Lord that grants it. Call on him. Call on him by faith. Persevere when he looks delaying. Persevere in faith. Get an anchor for your faith. Press on with God. Pray until you get what you are looking for. And even in our nation today, we are going to also pray. And say, Lord, send us transformation. People have been looking for transformation for Nigeria. It's a slogan everywhere now. But instead of things getting better, it's getting worse. We need to call on the Lord and not to lose heart. We need to plead with him always and not drop our faith. He that shall come, shall come. He will not tarry. We are going to pray. We are going to call on the Lord. Whatever your situation, we will start with our own situation. Is it your marriage? Is there any, any loss of joy? Is the wine finished? And you've been praying and crying, but you have lost faith. You say, whatever will happen, let it happen. Me, I will serve God, Joe, and I will go to heaven. Don't do like that. You are more than conquerors. Don't be a loser. Don't drop your faith. We will pray. Is it children? You have been calling on the Lord over these children, but they are not changing. Will you please cry to heaven and get an anchor for your soul, for your faith? Is it a matter of, of maybe borrowing? You know another widow borrowed and borrowed and borrowed until her husband died and then she began to cry to heaven where God could answer her. And she got it and she persevered and did what, what instructions they gave her. We are going to pray. You will call on the Lord over your situation. You will plead with him to arise and to answer prayers. God knows all our, our weaknesses. He knows all our cares. He will answer prayers. Whatever is the situation that you are crying for transformation, to, I want you to put your hand on your heart and receive answers to your prayers in the name of Jesus. Receive answers to your prayers in the name of Jesus. Those of you that need transformation in your bodies, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Transformation in your homes, in your marital relationships, receive your answers in the name of Jesus. transformation in the choice of a marriage partner receive your answers in Jesus name transformation over the matter of your children receive your answers in the name of Jesus transformation in your place of work receive your solution in the name of Jesus Every aspect of life where you need 
God's divine intervention tonight. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the one who said we should call upon you. In the day of trouble, you will answer us. Lord, you are the one who calls us to come to you. You said, come to me, oh ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Tonight we receive our rest in the name of Jesus. We need our rest to labor for transformation in our nations. We need our rest, rest in our homes, rest in our families. Rest, rest in our bodies, rest in our souls, rest in our spirits. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Rest, rest from sin, rest from demons, rest from the enemy in any dimension. We receive our rest in the name of Jesus. We are meant for signs and for wonders. We cannot be tied any longer. Whatever has tied us that has not allowed us to serve God acceptably, to become agents of transformation, we lose you. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity, infirmity of body, infirmity of the soul, infirmity of the spirit, infirmity in whatever dimension, you are loosed from that infirmity in the name of Jesus. Declare your liberty tonight. Receive your liberty in the name of Jesus. You will be for signs and for wonders. You will be for signs and for wonders. You will be for signs and for wonders. In the name of Jesus. The Lord has need of you. He said to those servants, If anybody says, Why are you losing that coat? Say to them, The Lord has need of him. Tonight, we declare to everything, every infirmity, every tying down, the Lord has need of each one of us. Loose and let them go in the name of Jesus. And since the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. You are free indeed. You are free indeed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, tonight. Thank you, Father, tonight. You are the Lord who does wonders. We give you praise because you watch over your word to perform it. Lord, as we go free tonight, give us a heart that will travel, a heart that will labor in prayers, prayers by faith for transformation in our different nations. In the name of Jesus. As you have proposed to use us to this extent, we know we know that the devil is an enemy. 
but tonight you have given us liberty so we stand in that liberty we are going to do havoc to the kingdom of darkness in our generation in the name of Jesus we will be vessels for transformation the kingdom of God will be established by our hands by our persevering prayers by our persevering labor in the name of Jesus Christ none of us will be feeble we will do valiantly we will do valiantly in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you for hearing us thank you for answering us we bless and we worship you we have this confidence that you have answered prayers thank you father in Jesus name we have prayed Amen. Amen.